Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing super, super well. So welcome to today's video. Today we're gonna be talking about what happened to Alicia Navarro. This is a very highly requested case. I received so many Instagram comments and YouTube comments asking me to talk about what happened to Alicia. I was able to get in contact with Alicia's mother, Jessica, and you know she was able to help me make this video by providing details. And she's also gonna be a part of the video, so you will be hearing from her a little bit later on. Jessica is absolutely amazing. She is such a strong and dedicated mother. Every single day she works so hard to continue to spread awareness on her daughter's disappearance. And I know it must be incredibly difficult to talk about it every single day and you know to wake up every morning without answers as to what happened to your daughter. She's just amazing so hopefully this video will reach more people and we can help keep Alicia's story alive. Thank you all so much for being here and for being so supportive. I truly appreciate that you guys took the time to listen to what happened to Alicia. You guys are literally the best familia ever. I feel like I say this in every single video, but you guys are the best. If it wasn't for you guys, I would not have this platform where I can share these stories and, you know, reach thousands of people. So yeah, thank you guys again for being such amazing viewers. And with that, that's pretty much all I have to say. Let's jump right into today's video. Alicia Cristina Navarro was born on September 20th, 2004 to her parents, Ivan and Jessica Nunez. Alicia is the oldest of two siblings. She has a younger brother and a younger sister. Now, there's not really much that we know about Alicia's biological father, Ivan, because Ivan and Jessica did get separated and eventually she got remarried. So we don't really know much about him, but Alicia lived in Glendale, Arizona with her family and she had a dog named Sushi that she absolutely loved. Like Sushi was literally like her best friend. Jessica describes her daughter as a sweet girl who absolutely loved her family. She was just a very quiet girl, but she was also very loving and caring. Everywhere she went, whether it was with an animal or with a person, she just showed so much care and affection. Ever since she was a little girl, Jessica noticed that Alicia was exceptionally advanced in her sensory abilities and intelligence. She learned how to tie her shoes on her own, and she even did her own laundry at a very young age. And she was just always very smart when it came to electronics. Now, Alicia is autistic, and Jessica was pretty much her main caretaker. She would take her to all her appointments, to her therapy sessions, and because of that, they became very close. Alicia was very smart. You know, she enjoyed reading. She made the honor roll at school, and, you know, social interactions were overwhelming for her, so she didn't have, like, a big group of friends, but she did have a small group that, you know, she was friends with since kindergarten. Alicia honestly found it easier to socialize on the internet. So she started going online more and more and she started chatting in these online gaming forums such as Minecraft and Discord. Alicia also really enjoyed anime and she spent a lot of the time texting and communicating with her friends online. Hello, my name is Jessica Nunez and I am Alicia Navarro's mom. My daughter is a very beautiful, loving, caring person. I miss her very much. She hardly had any outings. She dedicated most of her time in social media and playing games. Honestly, this is just what worked for her. It was just easier for her to make that connection behind a computer screen. And I honestly get that. Like, I get that it can be difficult to make friends in person. I know I'm the same way. Like, I feel like it's easier to talk to people through like the camera or through the computer than actually speaking to people in person. So that was the same for Alicia. She just felt like it was way easier to be chatting online and making friends through there. Now, Jessica was aware of how much time her daughter spent online, but you know, she never really saw anything negative or bad about it since Alicia was always at the house when she was online. She would use the house's Wi-Fi and, you know, she just saw it as a way for her daughter to have friends and to be social. She didn't think that anything bad would happen. All Jessica wanted was for her daughter to be happy and she would always encourage her daughter to make friends and be social. She wanted Alicia to get out there, you know, just have a happy life. Jessica and Alicia had a very close relationship and she actually stopped working so that she could take care of her daughter full time. She was able to get 
get Alicia a behavioral coach in 2017 to help her navigate the social aspect of school and life. Alicia actually had to change schools a couple of times and she was also homeschooled at one point due to her social anxiety. It was just a lot for Alicia to handle, but this behavioral coach was helping and you know, Jessica was there to just support her daughter and just help her get through this. So like I mentioned, Alicia would often have to change schools and at the time of her disappearance, she was getting ready for a new change, which was enrolling into Brigade Catholic High School in Phoenix, Arizona. About a month into this new chapter of her life, Alicia was actually happy about this. You know, she was doing well, she was warming up to the school, and she was actually making friends. Jessica says that her daughter was very happy there. She would actually wake up on her own to get ready for school, she would brush her hair before classes, and this was such a positive thing for Alicia. Jessica was just so happy to see her daughter this excited and, you know, joyful about attending school and socializing with people because again this was something that caused Alicia so much anxiety. Now Alicia took great comfort in having a routine. She had a very set routine of what she wanted to do, how she wanted things to be done and if this routine was disrupted she would become agitated. So for example she preferred to eat the same type of foods, she listened to the same type of music which was typically pop hits and she also liked to wear long sleeve shirts daily. And she was living in Arizona so obviously the weather was very hot there. So even if it was like scorching hot outside, Alicia would still wear her long sleeve shirts. You know, that's just what she liked and that's just what made her feel comfortable. Everyone in Alicia's life knew about her routine and they knew about the things that she liked. However, in the months leading up to her disappearance, Alicia started to change. She began acting differently. She started to show different types of behaviors and she started to kind of break free from the routine that she had for so many years. She specifically started to show some new interests. She started to read comic books. She stopped listening to pop music and she would listen to classic rock such as Pink Floyd. And she also started getting into fitness products such as protein powders. Again, this is just really different than what Alicia normally did because you know she only liked to listen to pop music and now she was listening to rock. So it was just something that Jessica noticed and thought was a little bit odd. One of the comic books that Alicia was specifically interested in was in Marvel's Demon in a Bottle Iron Man series. This comic book cost about $200 and Jessica did end up buying Alicia this book for her. But again, all of these new interests and you know, things that Alicia was doing were just so different than what she regularly did. Alicia also started to express interest in body sprays. She wanted her mom to buy her some new makeup and she also wanted to buy some, you know, kind of like provocative clothing. Now before this, Alicia never wore any type of fragrance or body spray due to her aversion to overpowering smells. So she never really wore perfume. She also never wore makeup, but now she was asking her mom if she could go get some concealer. So Jessica decided to take her to a local Mac store to get her some new makeup. Now, as for the clothing, like I mentioned, Alicia normally always wore a long sleeve shirt. Even in the heat, she would wear a long sleeve. But now Alicia was asking her mother to buy her an open back shirt, which Jessica found was odd. You know, she felt like it was a little bit provocative since Alicia at this time was only 14 years old. And she's very timid and shy. So, you know, she felt like her daughter asking her to buy this open back shirt was just a little bit weird. However, Jessica just honestly assumed that these changes were the result of peer pressure at her high school because you know how high school can be. You're fresh out of middle school. You want to fit in. You want to make new friends. You know, people start wearing makeup. They start changing their clothes. You know, things like that happen. So Jessica honestly felt like this was just because of high school and that's why Alicia wanted to make all these new changes. And Jessica was such a supportive mom. She just wanted wanted Alicia to grow and be a joyful teenager. So she did end up getting her daughter the makeup, she did end up getting her new clothes and the body sprays. Now two weeks before her disappearance, Alicia asked Jessica if she could go to the mall with a male friend from school. Now we'll call this friend Jack for now. He was actually Alicia's best friend since kindergarten, so the two of them were very close. Alicia really wanted to go to the mall to hang out with her friend and Jessica agreed to the plan. Now normally Alicia preferred to you know spend her time at the house in her bed room talking to people online but you know this time she wanted to branch out and she wanted to go socialize in person so of course Jessica felt like she should let her daughter go so she dropped Alicia off at the mall and later when she picked her up Alicia was talking to her mom about a boy that she had met during her time at the mall and she had met up with one of Jack's friends who was quite fit he was really into protein powder he was really into supplements and you know things like that so a lot of people wonder if you know maybe because Alicia met this guy at the mall who was into protein supplements supplements and protein powders that that's 
why maybe Alicia started requesting these things from her mom. Another thing that Jessica noticed during this time is that there was a hole about the size of a golf ball in Alicia's window screen. Now this really stuck out to Jessica. You know, why is there a hole in my daughter's window and how did this happen? So she asked Alicia about this and according to Jessica, Alicia told her that a bird did it. However, Jessica's husband pointed out that this hole was clearly made from the inside of the room, not from the outside. So how could a bird have done this? Now, looking back at this, Jessica wonders, you know, was Alicia using the hole in the screen to pass notes to someone outside? Or what would the purpose of this hole in the window be? There was just some odd things going around. And like I mentioned earlier on in the video, Alicia spent a lot of her time online. She would go on Minecraft, she would go on Discord, and that's pretty much where she felt the most comfortable socializing with people and making friends. So oftentimes, Alicia would come home from school and she would immediately log on to the internet and start chatting with her friends. Again, Jessica didn't really think much about this. She figured that Alicia was safe because she was doing it inside the home and she was aware of what she was doing. However, one day she did catch Alicia giving her personal details to a stranger online. As soon as Jessica noticed that she was doing this, she sat Alicia down and she had a very serious conversation with her about the dangers of online chatting and you know about how she needed to be careful with who she was talking to online and what she shared with these people. She wanted her daughter to know that it's not okay to give out personal information to a complete stranger, even if they claim to be your friend. In another incident, Jessica actually filed a incident report with the Arizona Police Department because she had caught Alicia texting with someone who was much older than her. You know, at this time, Alicia was 14 years old and based on the conversations that Jessica read, this man was way older than her because they were talking about some very mature and grown up things. This man was asking Alicia if she had any stuffed animals and he even said that if she didn't have any stuffed animals, he could be her stuffed animal. It was just a very inappropriate conversation. Like why is someone saying that to a minor online? It was just so wrong. So as soon as Jessica saw this conversation, she immediately reported it to the police department. However, they really didn't do much. They said that they really couldn't do anything because legally nothing bad had happened. So all they could do at this time was just file a police report and that was it. I get in a way that technically nothing illegal was done, but I still feel like maybe the police could have done more. Maybe they could have searched for this man or given him a warning or at least do something. So fast forward to September 14th, 2019, just five days before Alicia's 15th birthday, which actually she was really excited about. She told her mom that she wanted to get a fancy steak dinner. She wanted to get a red velvet cake and she was just so excited about her 15th birthday. So that day on September 14th, Alicia was actually feeling a little bit anxious and she asked her mom if she could stay home from school. Now at this point, Alicia was a freshman in high school and Jessica agreed to let her stay home from school because she didn't want to pressure her daughter since school was such a big change for her and it was already something that was overwhelming. So she told Alicia that yes, she could stay home from school and she told her that they would just spend the day together. They decided to go to McDonald's to get Alicia's favorite meal, which was French fries and chicken nuggets. After McDonald's, they went to go get their eyebrows threaded together and then they ended up visiting a chocolate shop and getting something sweet. It was just a wonderful day where they were bonding and just having one-on-one -on -one time together. Jessica says that she didn't notice anything weird, you know, Alicia wasn't acting any different and nothing really stood out to her. Later that day when they finally got home, Alicia went to her bedroom and Jessica says that she could hear her laughing in the bedroom so she just assumed that Alicia was feeling better and that her anxiety had calmed down. That night, Alicia was going to stay up late playing video games online as usual. Somewhere between 12 and 1 a.m., Alicia went downstairs to the kitchen to grab a glass of water and she actually ran into her mother, Jessica. Alicia seemed surprised to be running into her mom. You know, maybe she didn't think that her mom was still gonna be awake at this time or, you know, she just didn't expect it. So she just grabbed her water, she told her mom that she loved her and then she headed back upstairs into her bedroom. Jessica assumed that Alicia had just gone back to bed, but unfortunately, that's not what happened. Later that morning at around 7 a.m. on September 15th, Jessica woke up and she went downstairs to start making breakfast for the family. As she was making the breakfast, she noticed that the back door was cracked open. Now, initially, Jessica didn't think much about this. She just figured that maybe her husband had left the back door open or, you know, like something like that had happened. She wasn't thinking that something sinister had occurred. So she went to go speak to her husband and he said, no, I didn't leave the back door open. So that's when the husband decided to go check Alicia's bedroom and that's when he realized that Alicia was not there. So Jessica decided 
decided to investigate and she walked over to the back door. She went into the yard and that's when she noticed that two of her chairs had been placed against the thick brick fence along with some extra bricks. Now she thought this was really weird. Like why are these chairs placed against the wall? So she started looking more and that's when she noticed that there were footprints leading over the fence. Jessica immediately started looking all over the place. She searched the entire house for any sign of Alicia, but she was gone. She wasn't home. She was nowhere to be found. This was just so overwhelming for Jessica. And you know, as soon as she realized that Alicia was missing and as soon as she noticed the chairs against the wall, she knew that most likely Alicia had used the chairs to scale over the fence and sneak out. I mean, that's the only thing that Jessica could think of that happened in that moment. So near the brick wall where the chairs were leaned up against is just dirt. This brick wall reaches from the backyard to the front yard. And then there's a metal gate there, which is usually unlocked. However, Jessica believes that Alicia did not think that the gate was unlocked, which is why she chose to jump over the wall instead of just sneaking out through the gate. Now, Jessica continued looking around the house, around Alicia's bedroom to see if she could find any clues as to what happened to her daughter. And she did find something. She ended up finding a note. Now, this note read, I ran away. I will be back. I swear. I'm sorry. Signed, Alicia. This was just such a shocking thing for Jessica to read. And as soon as she started to analyze the note a little bit more, she realized that something was off. The handwriting of the note was not Alicia's normal handwriting. It was actually very messy and Alicia had very good handwriting. So she felt like Alicia had written this as if she was in a hurry, you know, as if she was running late and she just quickly wanted to write a note, letting her mom know what was going on. So she does believe that Alicia did write this note, but that she wrote it very quickly because she was just trying to get out of there. Well, when I woke up, um, this door was slightly open like this. Then she found a stack of chairs against the block wall in her yard. It seems like she jumped this part of the wall and her shoe prints went straight over there. When Alicia left her home, she had her MacBook and her cell phone on her. Pretty important devices for a 14 year old. But since that day, there's been no digital trace at all. Many questions remain. Why did she sneak out? Where did she go? And who did she meet? After finding all of this evidence, Jessica immediately called the Arizona Police Department and reported Alicia as missing. Police officers immediately arrived to the residence to search for any additional clues and you know, to figure out where Alicia had gone or if someone had picked her up. They started going through her bedroom and besides the note that Jessica had found, it was determined that Alicia had taken her laptop, her cell phone, body spray, and some new comics, specifically the new Demon in a Bottle comic book from Marvel. Along with those things taken, she had also taken a small backpack adorned with metallic cat ears. One thing police did note is that yes, Alicia took her laptop and her cell phone, but she didn't take any of her chargers with her. Maybe she forgot to pack her chargers and she left in such a hurry that she didn't really think about it, but it's also believed that maybe she planned on returning. I mean, she did leave that note saying that she was gonna be back. So that's why she didn't take her chargers because you know she figured she would be back before any of her devices died. Now, she also didn't take her gaming computer or her school laptop. So since Alicia took her cell phone with her, police tried to track down her cell phone to see if maybe that could help them figure out, you know, where she was or where her phone last pinged. But according to Jessica, her daughter's phone was untraceable. Now, she doesn't really know what police mean by this, but they just say that they cannot track down her phone and that her phone has been turned off since the day she disappeared. Alicia also didn't take any of her medication with her and Jessica says that she needs this medication. It's important to her, you know, she had a very strict routine with no deviations from her schedule and she was prone to emotional meltdowns, so she really needed this medication. Jessica literally had to beg the Glendale Police Department to put out a silver alert for Alicia. I mean, she just wanted the entire community to see Alicia's face and to know that she was missing. Maybe she was still out there, maybe she was in the street somewhere and if someone came across the silver alert and recognized Alicia, it 
it would help solve the case. But she literally had to beg the police to put this alert out there. Like, they weren't really doing much at the beginning because, you know, Alicia did leave that note saying that she had ran away and that she was gonna come back home. Even though she was a minor, police were kind of just like, oh, well, she's a runaway. Like, let's just wait and see what happens. But Jessica and the rest of the family were like, no, we're not just gonna sit here and do nothing just in case she does come home. Okay, so let's talk about the evidence that police found outside of the house. The footprints that were left there in the backyard leading up to the fence were proved to match Alicia's shoes. So they knew that it was her that had climbed through the backyard. Now they started looking into the two chairs that were placed up against the brick wall. And, you know, like Jessica believed, they also concluded that Alicia most likely used them to climb over the wall. Jessica was determined to figure out what had happened. So she actually went out and she gathered her own evidence and she went all over the neighborhood asking people if they had seen Alicia or they had any type of surveillance footage that could help show them, you know, what actually happened that night. And someone did have surveillance footage. Their next door neighbor actually had a camera that pointed to the road. And this camera showed a white truck leaving the area at around the same time that they believe Alicia left her home. However, they were not able to get a clear view of who was driving this white truck or any other information about this car. There also was no footage showing Alicia actually leaving. So unfortunately, the footage wasn't too helpful. But again, Jessica and the police department truly believed that Alicia planned on returning. Even though she planned on still coming back, they still wanted to figure out what had happened just in case. But there hadn't been any fights happening between Alicia and Jessica at this time. There weren't any type of disagreements between the household. So it's not like she ran away because she wasn't happy. What Jessica believes most likely happened is that Alicia met someone online and that that person convinced her to leave her home. Alicia had made plans to celebrate her 15th birthday. She was so excited about going out with her family and with her friends and celebrating this big day. She wanted to eat her steak dinner. She wanted to cut into her cake. So all of these factors together just confuses Jessica as to why her daughter would leave. But it also makes her realize that Alicia probably did plan on coming home since she did make all of these plans. The family immediately started to put out flyers about Alicia's disappearance. You know, they were letting the community know that she was missing and that they were asking for the public's help. At the start, there would be so many tips coming into the tip line that Jessica said she would go out there and she would look at these tips for herself. Sometimes she would even go at night by herself to follow through with these tips. And, you know, it was just a lot for someone to go through. This took such a big toll on her mental health and it still does to this day. Days would go by without any answers or without any type of serious movement in the investigation. And on the fifth day of Alicia's disappearance was actually Alicia's 15th birthday. On September 20th, 2019, instead of celebrating Alicia's 15th birthday with her friends and family, Jessica had to celebrate that day without Alicia. Thankfully, family members and even strangers in the community decided to show up and show their support to Jessica. And they actually helped volunteer to spread the word of Alicia's disappearance. During the searches, they were handing out cake to everyone, you know, for Alicia's birthday. And Jessica was just sobbing because she missed her daughter. You know, instead of having a birthday party for her daughter, she was having a search party. There's actually this video of Jessica on this day and she's handing out cake to all these strangers and she says, you know, I'm surrounded by people that I don't even know and we're here advocating for her and we're singing happy birthday to Alicia who isn't here, who's out there somewhere missing and alone. It was an emotional day. I mean, I cannot even imagine going through something like that. My heart just absolutely breaks for Jessica and for the rest of the family. I just cannot imagine having to celebrate your loved one's birthday while they're missing. Now, a couple of people did come forward and said that they had actually seen Alicia after she disappeared. One of her siblings' friends came forward and said that she claimed to have seen her walking on foot at La Pradera Park, which is only about a mile and a half away from Alicia's home on the afternoon of September 19th. Of course, Jessica heard this lead and she wanted to follow up. So she actually went to the park. She started speaking to anybody that hung out there. She was trying to look for surveillance footage, but no, she didn't really find that much information. However, there was another witness that also came forward and this was a man who was actually a regular at the park and he corroborated the friend's claim. He said that a girl matching Alicia's description was talking and was being pulled by her hand through the park at around 4 p.m. and that she was walking with a man that had tattoos on his hands, neck, and face. 
Now, La Pradera Park is a large park, and this area is often filled with families going to have fun at the park, having picnics, playing soccer games, you know, things like that. There were even AA meetings held at this park. However, residents say that during the day, the park is, you know, very friendly, but that at night, it's a different story. It's no longer a family-friendly park, you know, because this area is home to a large transient community, making the area a place where people can go to do drugs and you know there's not really any police officers patrolling the area so it just gets a little bit more chaotic at night. Now there's also no surveillance cameras at this park or any type of security so there's really no way that police can corroborate these claims. Yes these people claim that they saw Alicia but there's really no proof to confirm this. So two weeks after Alicia's disappearance the FBI joined the Glendale Police Department in searching for Alicia. They wanted to figure out what had happened to her, who she was talking to online and if that's how she ended up running away. As soon as they started looking into her online presence, they discovered that on September 4th, just 11 days before Alicia went missing, she had messaged a 20-year-old man named Clark who lived in a completely different state on Discord. Now, Discord is an app that's very popular among gamers. I haven't really used the app that much. I think I went on it one time because a couple other YouTubers that I follow have a Discord, but I don't really know much about it, but I just know that it's a place where people can go live and chat there. So Alicia messaged Clark on Discord and she told him that she sold her Xbox, which she loved very much, and that she also had a boyfriend. She didn't give any details about the boyfriend or about who this person was. All she told Clark was that she had a boyfriend. She also mentioned to him that she was learning how to play guitar and that she was thinking about joining a band with one of her classmates. So detectives are reading this conversation and they just want to find out more about who this Clark person is. So the FBI go and they actually question 20 year old Clark and he says that he is an experienced gamer who even runs his own discord server which like I mentioned is a place where gamers can talk in real time and he was actually able to give the FBI more insight into Alicia's online life. Clark actually lent the FBI his Xbox for about 18 hours so they could go through all of the information all of the chats that he had on his Xbox just to you know kind of clear his name and he even gave them all of his passwords so it seemed like he had nothing to hide. Clark says that him and Alicia were part of the same gamer group and that this group of friends were trying to build up Alicia's confidence towards making more friends in real life. He says that she was very introverted, timid, and shy. He added that it just wouldn't be normal for Alicia to actually meet up with someone she barely knew. So he also found it shocking that she ran away. After speaking to Clark and, you know, looking further into her online presence, the National Center for Missing and Exploited children began helping the Glendale Police Department detectives with the search effort and they were able to launch billboards of their own and they listed Alicia on their national website. I've talked about the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children before but they are an amazing organization. They have helped bring so much awareness to so many missing children so I will link their page down below so you guys can read more about them. It's just amazing that they were able to help launch billboards and help Alicia's family spread the word about her disappearance. My name my name is Jessica Nunez. I am Alicia Navarro's mom. My daughter disappeared on September 15, 2019. She left a note indicating I ran away. I will be back. I swear. I'm sorry, Alicia. Since that day, there has not been a trace of her. She liked helping others. My daughter is a sweet, loving, smart child. She has autism, so she, she has challenges and I'm very worried for her. She loved penguins. Uh, she loved reading books. And she's a very smart girl that like technology. If you could please take a moment to look at my daughter's photo. She could be your daughter, your relative. So please take a moment to look at that picture and see if you could help to be able to locate my daughter and bring her safe home. 
The billboards were placed all over the Phoenix area. They were placed in Nogales. They were placed in Las Vegas, San Diego, Mexico. You know, even places receiving high amounts of tourism had billboards with Alicia's face on it. Again, it's just amazing that they were able to give this kind of support because Alicia's mother, Jessica, was very involved in the investigation. You know, she was driving through the streets of Arizona, passing out flyers, you know, determined to gather tips about what happened to her daughter. So it just felt like she was doing a lot of the work Work on her own. So it was really nice that now she had the organization helping her out. To bring even more awareness, on September 8th, just nine days after Alicia disappeared, the AE network had a show called Live PD. And on the show, they featured a Glendale police lieutenant in an effort to spread the word about Alicia's disappearance. This lieutenant was named Jay, and he went on the show saying that the department could use the public's help on being the eyes and the ears of the community so that they can look into any new information about what may have happened to Alicia. Lieutenant Jay also added that due to Alicia's autism, this could also make her more shy in public and this could also increase her anxiety in certain situations. And due to her being smaller in nature, this could also make Alicia appear younger than she actually is. He specifically said, the longer Alicia is away from home, the more at risk of exploitation she is due to her age, stature, and autism. Jessica added, you know, that Alicia doesn't even know how to be by herself. She doesn't know how to take the bus. I mean, she needs help. So someone has to have seen something or know something that's able to help with the case. She also said that if anyone had seen Alicia to just hug her, tell her how much I love her and miss her. Alicia, please come home. I miss you. Please have some sort of communication with me. Let me know that you're okay. So it was great that Alicia was on the show and that she was able to get the national news coverage. And I believe there was even an episode of Dateline about Alicia's disappearance. Besides being on the more, you know, mainstream media, there have also been a handful of podcasts and creators on YouTube talking about what happened to Alicia. Like I mentioned, Jessica has been very active with the investigation, so she's done plenty of interviews with podcasters and YouTubers, you know, talking about what happened to her daughter. Like I said, she actually helped me make this video as well. She is just absolutely amazing, and I am so happy that people are helping her spread awareness and helping her share her daughter's disappearance. So while you may have already heard about what happened to Alicia because you heard her on another podcast or you heard about it on Crime Junkies, that is perfectly fine. It's amazing that you're aware of this case and that you're able to learn more about what happened to Alicia and that, you know, with this video, new eyes can reach her case. Again, these are real cases with real people and Jessica just wants the most awareness possible on her daughter's case. So the more people share her story, the better. So when the pandemic started in 2020, Jessica was even more worried for her daughter. She felt heartbroken at the fact that her daughter was out there all alone without her family during this difficult time. And knowing that there was a virus out in the world and that things were just so chaotic, it was just too much for Jessica to handle. On top of that, Alicia also has to take medication and she has a compromised immune system. But she didn't take any of that medication with her. So Jessica was so worried about what her daughter was going through and how she was all alone during this time. Now, normally I don't like to talk about theories because I feel like they can be very harmful to the investigation and to the family members involved. However, this is one of those cases where there are just so many theories about what could have potentially happened to Alicia. So I just want to mention a couple of them that Alicia's own mother, Jessica, also believes could have happened to her daughter. What investigators and Alicia's mother believe happened is that she was most likely groomed and lured away by a predator and that on one of the forums that Alicia would go online, she met someone there that convinced her to somehow run away. Jessica said, quote, I thought my daughter was safe inside my home because she was inside of my home without knowing I had people in my home through social media. You know, I've seen people say this before, like, you know, organizations that talk about online safety. They say, yes, you can lock your doors, you can lock your windows, you can do everything you can to prevent someone from breaking inside your house. But most people don't talk about how computers and cell phones and Xboxes, you know, things like that are another opening for people to come inside your home. So Jessica honestly believes that that's what most likely happened. You know, her daughter was part of these online chat rooms and gaming groups. So she believes that an online predator got close to her and ultimately lured her out of the house. Again, she didn't intend on leaving for long since she did leave that note and she didn't take any of her chargers with her and she didn't really take anything else. So all of this 
this just makes it seem like she planned on returning, but Jessica feels like something is preventing her from actually coming back. Jessica has spoken to Alicia's friends to see if maybe they knew who she was talking to online, but her friends have no idea who this person could have been or who she could have ran away with. Three months after Alicia disappeared, the family had to spend Christmas without her and without any clue as to what happened to her or where she was. It was so incredibly difficult to go through something like that and her mom said, you know, in my mind, I didn't think it would take this long for her to come back, especially because she swore on that note that she would return. It's just so important to never give up and I want to give you guys an example of a case that kind of just proves, you know, why you should never give up hope and that why it's so important to spread these stories and share these flyers because you never know who may see this flyer and recognize this person. So there's another case that happened to another Alicia. Her name is Alicia Kozakaevich. I hope I pronounced that right. I just watched like five videos on how to say it, but it's a little bit difficult. So I apologize if I pronounced her last name wrong, but she was actually lured by an online predator when she was only 13 years old. This person was posing as another 13 year old boy. And one day he convinced Alicia to come outside of her parents home to finally meet him and just quickly say hello. So one day after dinner, just before having dessert, Alicia told her mom that her tummy hurt. However, that was a lie. In reality, she was actually going to go outside to meet with her online friend. So she snuck out and she didn't even bring a coat with her. And that night it was like freezing cold because she planned on coming back. So she went outside and then right there on the street, she was kidnapped. So the 13 year old boy that she was speaking to online was not a 13 year old boy. In fact, it was an older man. Alicia's family was posting her flyers all over the news, all over the neighborhood and just, you know, we're spreading the word about her daughter's disappearance. And because of that, Alicia was actually found. On the fourth day, her kidnapper was live streaming what he was going to do to her. And someone on this live stream recognized Alicia from her missing and exploited children's poster. They called 911 and the FBI were able to trace the IP address of the live stream and they rescued her. She says that she believed that her parents would never stop looking for her and that the strength and determination they had is what powered her to keep fighting and staying alive. Thankfully, spreading awareness on her case and sharing her photos was ultimately what saved her. Now she wants people to be more aware of how children are extremely vulnerable on the internet and that parents and children need to be more educated and aware of the dangers. Now the reason I bring this up is because people need to be more aware of the dangers of being online and you need to know what their kids are doing on there because you never know who they're actually speaking to. On top of that, it also shows that there is hope that cases will be solved. You know, this is an example of how people did not give up. People continue to share share her photo and because of that someone recognized her and she was able to be rescued. It also reminds me of the Elizabeth Smart case. It's just so important to never give up hope and to continue to share these stories because again you never know who might see Alicia Navarro's photo and be like hey I actually know her and I know where she is. Jessica is doing an excellent job of being an advocate for her daughter and spreading awareness. She started to brainstorm of how she could reach more people and that's when she decided to turn to social media. As you know, social media is a great way to reach so many people and to share photos and videos and you know just reach people across the country. So she decided to turn to TikTok. Again, TikTok is amazing. It gives you the ability to go viral and that's exactly what Jessica saw happen with another case that you might know of. Sarah Turney, the sister of Alyssa Turney, who is an absolutely amazing person. I admire Sarah so much. I just admire everything that she has done to help bring justice for her sister. But just a quick summary, Alicia started to use TikTok and social media to get justice for her sister, Alyssa Turney, who went missing in 2001. Sarah was posting consistently about her sister's case. And because of that, Sarah's biological father and Alyssa's stepfather, Mr. Turney was charged with second degree homicide for Alyssa. It's just amazing how Sarah was able to use social media to help get her sister justice. So Jessica saw how well this worked for Sarah. So she decided to also do the same thing for her daughter. She started creating TikToks, sharing Alicia's story, and her TikTok grew to over 40,000 followers in just a couple of weeks after she posted one of the videos and it went viral. The video reached millions of people. Now her platform's 
consist of TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, you know, everything. And between all of these platforms, she has over 500,000 followers. Now, of course, this isn't easy for Jessica because it's a lot. It takes a lot to make these videos and to share these videos online because not everyone is nice or empathetic, which I hate. Like, I don't get how people can be rude to like a family member of a missing person. People can be so cruel. So Jessica would share these videos on TikTok and there were just some evil people out there that were messing with her and were telling her that they had Alicia and that they were looking for ransom money and you know, just things like that. People were just trying to take advantage of her situation, which is terrible. Like there's a mother on here begging for answers and is trying to spread awareness on her daughter's disappearance and you just want to scam her. It's crazy. So even though there are some people that were absolutely terrible on the app, there also is an overwhelming amount of support and love and kindness on social media. So I will link all of her social media platforms down below so you guys can check them out and, you know, show Jessica some support and help her share her daughter's disappearance. She also uses her platforms to spread awareness on the dangers of being online. Jessica fears that her daughter is a victim of human trafficking, and that's where Kathleen Wynn comes in. Kathleen is the executive director of Project 25. Now, Project 25's mission is to end sexual exploitation by 2025 by working with legislation, law enforcement, and victims of sex trafficking. This organization specializes in technology such as facial recognition to connect and present evidence to law enforcement to help their investigations. Kathleen says that the majority of volunteers have experienced using the technology and many of them have served in the CIA or in the armed forces. So as soon as she heard about Alicia's disappearance, Kathleen said that she knew she needed to help and provide additional resources that could help the investigation. Kathleen was also working with the Anti-Predator Project to help find Alicia. Now, Anti-Predator is a nonprofit organization that focuses on fighting human trafficking in the United States. They take on cases free of charge, which is absolutely amazing, and they work to identify kids that have been kidnapped and are being sold on the black market. The Anti-Predator Project has rescued over 30 children and has helped over 100 families. To this day in 2023, Anti-Predators is still helping in the investigation and is still helping to try and find Alicia. It has been nearly three years since Alicia left her home in the middle of the night and she is supposed to be turning 19 years old this September. Unfortunately, Alicia is still missing. There hasn't been much movement in her investigation. Investigators are continuing to search for Alicia and so is Jessica. Every single day she gets up hoping that this will be the day that she sees her daughter again. But it's just a lot to handle. You know, like I've mentioned in past videos, family members of missing people take such a mental and physical toll on them. You know, Jessica has other children that she needs to take care of. You know, she has bills to pay, so she has to be working and you know, she wishes that she could dedicate all day to just searching for her daughter, but she still has to be a mom to the other two siblings and she still has to, you know, continue on with life. She feels like there is not enough coverage or education on the topic of children being lured online. So, you know, make sure that you know your kids' passwords and that you're constantly talking to them about the dangers of using social media and that, you know, you just monitor what they're doing online. It's just important to keep up with that. There is a GoFundMe open to help raise money to put up some billboards that Jessica wants to put up that will help bring awareness to Alicia's disappearance. If you want to make a donation, that would be absolutely amazing. I will definitely be making a donation on behalf of La Familia, so I will link the GoFundMe down below so you guys can check it out and again, make a donation if you're able to. If you're not able to make a donation, that is totally fine. You can help by sharing Alicia's flyer, sharing this video, supporting Jessica online through her social media platforms, and just help keeping the story out there. Alicia Navarro was last seen wearing a white sweatshirt, whitewashed denim overalls, and black and white van sneakers. Here's a photo of the sweatshirt that Alicia was wearing. She is a Hispanic female with brown hair, brown eyes, and she also had braces on her teeth and a scar on her left knuckle. There had been some confusion online about her braces because some of the photos that have been publicized show Alicia without braces. And then there's other photos that show Alicia with braces. So I was listening to Jessica's interview with Jason Hebert. I will link his video down below so you guys can check it out because it was a very good interview. But Jessica says that at the time, Alicia did have braces, but now she doesn't really believe her daughter still has them because where would she be getting her braces done? When you have braces,
braces, you need to frequently see an orthodontist to get the braces tightened up and, you know, just fix anything that needs to be fixed. So she honestly feels like maybe her daughter took her braces off or that something happened because there's no way that she would be getting help from an orthodontist without being recognized or being, you know, saved at this point. So yes, just to confirm, Alicia did have braces at the time of her disappearance, but she just wanted to show photos of what Alicia would look like without the braces, just in case she took them off. There's also photos of how Alicia would look like wearing a face mask because, you know, the pandemic happened, so a lot of people still wear it. So I will link all of those photos down below, and I will also link her page to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, where you can find more information about Alicia's disappearance. If you have any information about about what may have happened to Alicia Navarro, please contact the Glendale Police Department at 623-930-3000. Or you can also contact Anti-Predator Project at 305-796-4859. There is a $20,000 reward for anyone who has any information about what may have happened to Alicia. So please share this video, share her story, and let's get the word out there and let's keep the momentum going because Alicia needs to be found Found. Jessica needs to know what happened to her daughter. I want to end the video with a quote from Alicia's mother. She said, I need to know where my daughter is. There's not a day I don't think of her. And Alicia, if you are hearing this, just know that I love you. You know that I do and I am not mad. I just want to know that you're okay, Alicia. That's all. And with that, that is all the information I have for today's video. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to listen to today's video and for listening to what happened to Alicia Navarro. Thank you so much, Jessica, for helping me make this video. And I just want you to know that we are here to support you and we are here to help you in any way possible. So if there's anything else we can do to help with the case, please let us know. I'm so sorry that you still do not have closure or any type of answers as to what happened to your daughter. I I truly hope that she is found and that she is reunited with you soon and that this case gets solved. I will keep you guys posted on any new movements in the investigation and yeah that's pretty much all the information. I wish that this hadn't happened. This case just really freaked me out because you know like people say you can lock your doors, lock your windows, but someone can still enter your home through your computer, through your cell phone, through your internet. It's just really alarming so I just want people to be more aware about the dangers of social media and about chat rooms and you know we just all need to be careful and just make sure that our kids are not speaking to someone they shouldn't be speaking to but all right you guys again thank you so much for watching today's video i truly appreciate it so much if you guys haven't seen the latest episode of my podcast what happened i will link the episode down below so you guys can also watch it and show the podcast some support make sure to let me know in the comment section what other cases you would like me to cover and i will see you all in the next video bye guys Thank you.